Hey gang, Azrak here and welcome back to my channel. As you all know, I make 3D printable action figures and I have been making my own action figures at home for a few years now. In this time, the leaps and bounds resin has come is beyond astonishing. We now have resins that are strong and durable while being scratch and grinding resistant, perfect for action figures. And I have been constantly showcasing resins that work with different action figure use cases, breaking down what works, what doesn't work and why. So in this exciting episode, I bring you an alternate resin that I've been provided to try for my action figures. Nova 3D reached out to me to try their washable mecha resin. Full disclaimer, no money has exchanged hands between Nova and myself and Nova 3D did not give me any guidelines or restrictions in making this video. So this is going to be an honest review of the resin. I use this resin to print out my Green Lantern Hal Jordan action figure that I made a while back. And this will be a good figure to print out since I already have a Jon Stewart that we can compare to that is printed and painted using the Resi 1 Tough 74 resin. So before we go any further, let's talk about the sponsors of today's video. If you're into prototyping, DIY projects, or full-blown product development, this is definitely for you. We're diving into something that has been a game changer for makers, engineers, and hobbyists worldwide. And that's the 3D printing and CNC machining services from PCBWay. Now you've probably heard of PCBWay as a leader of custom PCB manufacturing, but did you know that they've massively expanded their services into 3D printing and CNC machining? It's not just about circuit boards anymore. Whether you're designing custom enclosures, mechanical parts, prototypes, or even functional end-use components, PCBWay offers a huge range of materials and finishes to bring your ideas to life. For example, I have printed these action figures you see here on PCBWay using their UTR 3000 resin. It's tough, precise, and ready for your action figure parts. You can also find links to the action figure base body I made available exclusively on PCBWay in my description below. The process is super simple. Upload your CAD files, choose your material, your surface finish, and get an instant quote. No need for endless emails or waiting around. With 3D printing, you've got options like SLA for high detailed resin prints, SLS for tough nylon parts, and FDM for affordable prototyping. And for CNC, they work with metals like aluminum, brass, stainless steel, and even plastics like ABS and POM. What really makes PCBWay stand out is their attention to detail, their fast turnaround times, and global shipping. No matter where you are, you can get professional grade parts delivered right to your doorstep. I've personally used PCBWay for several projects and every time the quality has been top notch. From prototypes to production runs, they've got you covered. So if you're ready to take your projects to the next level, hit the link in the description below and check PCBWay out. So for this print, I used Lychee Slicer to slice everything. Lychee has been my favorite slicer for a really long time for their amazing UI and intuitive controls. I really like how their system allows for a community-based printer and resin settings, so you can use whatever settings have worked for other members in the community. And best of all, the top reason I love this slicer is because of its auto-support functionality. It has an amazing auto-support functionality that gives you a great foundation to set up your prints and reduce failures. And to top it all off, you can even compare your prints to a banana for scale. Lychee has been my go-to slicer for the past three years, so if you want to experience Lychee and its incredible features, please check out the link in my description below. It is an affiliate link, so every time you click, you also support the channel. So as always, I use my Uniformation GK2 for the print. The resin poured in smoothly and the consistency of the resin is not too thick or gloopy, which really helps the resin's ability to flow back under the print bed. The smell for this resin was not too strong or hard to stand even during printing, which is really good. And while printing, I also noticed that the resin is very easy to print and had no failures even on my first attempt. The bed adhesion was a little bit weak, but none of the parts failed or stuck to the vat on any of my prints. So I do believe the 99% success rate claim on Nova 3D's website. As long as the settings are in the correct ballpark range, the prints should print successfully. Also, this print was one of the easiest prints to take off the build plate. I barely put any effort using my scraper to get the prints off the build plate, which was very pleasing feeling, and I did not feel like I was scratching up the build plate or causing any dings. Parts printed with Nova 3D Mecha washable resin are super soft right out of the printer, and especially the supports are even softer and some of the easiest supports to remove from the printed parts. And due to this, even the support marks that are left on the prints are minimal and barely visible. And even when the parts are fully cured, they are slightly soft and flexible at least softer than the alternate offerings from other resin brands. So once fully cured, the parts are really light in color, which should really help the painting process and also help identify any imperfections on the print. However, based on my observations, there were no real issues with imperfections on the prints. So despite this being my first time printing with this material, I still got most of the exposure settings pretty spot on for my use case. So in summary, it was a really easy resin to work with and to get my print settings right. 
I cleaned this resin in IPA instead of water since I wanted to test the qualities of this resin for action figures rather than the water washability. However, the resin being washable with water definitely helps people who do not want harmful chemicals like IPA in their household. The resin fully cures in 90 seconds as suggested by Nova3D's website. However, I wanted to cure it for a bit longer so I cured the parts for about 5 minutes for peace of mind since Resi One's resins that I am used to can take up to 30 minutes post curing to fully cure. So as with every figure, I tested out this resin by printing out a leg. And no, I do not have a fascination with collecting doll legs. This leg comes from my Hal Jordan action figure from the Green Lantern Corps that I made a while back. I never printed or painted the Hal Jordan figure so I wanted to paint him to go alongside my John Stewart. So I found that there is a slight bit of scratchiness with this resin and although there is no grinding or dusting, the scratchiness is still visible. When assembling, I found that the resin was slightly flexible even when not heated and it was very flexible when heated with a hairdryer even for a few seconds, so the flexibility made the figure really easy to assemble. There were some minor scratches on the resin when rubbed against other resin parts, but no major dusting occurred. It might be due to the softness or flexibility of the resins, but the joints feel a little bit firmer than other resins and holds articulated positions a little bit better. So here we have all of our parts laid out in the light box. Just taking a closer look at the head, my wife has done an amazing job again and I really like the hair color on this one and it makes the head really pop. For the assembly, we start off with the arms. First we pop the shoulder joint onto the shoulder, then we put the shoulder onto the bicep and the elbow joint can then be placed onto the bicep followed by the forearm slotting into the elbow. The wrists are super simple but make sure that the longer peg goes into the forearm while the shorter peg can be pushed onto the hands. The whole arm can then be connected to the shoulder butterfly joint to complete one arm. We repeat the same process on the other arm to complete both arms. Now we move on to the assembly of the legs. This is a very simple part to assemble. We push the knees onto the thighs and then the calves onto the knees. The ankles can then be pushed into the calves. The toe joint can be flexed onto the heels and then the whole foot can be fit onto the ankles. Now repeating the same steps, we can complete the other leg. Now we move on to the torso pieces. We start off with the crotch part pressing onto the abdomen followed by the chest dumbbell joint onto the top half of the abdomen. Then we fit the whole assembly onto the chest piece and once that is done, we can move on to fitting the arms into the chest and once both arms are in, we can secure the body with the back piece and also pop the neck in. Penultimately, we can fit the legs onto the rest of the body. We do this one leg at a time, heating up the joints and popping them onto the ball joints. Finally, we can heat up the head and place it onto the body completing the assembly of our action figure. So here we have the action figure fully assembled and a close up look at the action figure and I think my wife has done a really good job with the paints once again. We can see the contrast between the painted figure and the unpainted figure in the shot. So I did the unpainted version of this figure to make some assembly reels on Instagram so please check them out to get a step by step guide on how I assemble these figures. So actually you will get to see someone other than me assemble these figures and get my wife's perspective on how easy or difficult it is to assemble one of these figures. Now back to our figure, I really like the paints on the hair, the mask, the logo and especially the clean whites on the gloves. She has added a little bit of silver to the white gloves to give it a little bit more shine. Although there is a slight bit of color mismatch on the chest versus all other parts, I think it's because of the overspray of the uh, silver. The figure overall looks pretty darn good. I'm really glad to inform you that the resin takes paints really well and I did not have any issues with painting the figure even without the use of primers. Alright, so this is where it gets interesting. For articulation, the knees and elbows on this figure does everything you would expect from it with the same range of motion as the John Stewart figure I printed with other resins. The joints are a bit stiffer with this resin and has a good level of hold on each position when articulating with the joints. For the ball joints like the torso, neck, shoulder, hips joints, I was a little bit more worried when articulating the joints due to the softness of this resin in fear that the pegs might break. While trying to pose my unpainted figure for some posed shots for this video, I actually managed to break the left hip on this figure. This is the same joint I used with the rest of my figures as well, so it looks like this resin does not deal well with torque. There are a few pros and cons about painting action figures with this resin. The pros are that the joints hold position better and are a little bit tighter in general using this resin. The con is that the wrist and the ankles are really hard to pivot and I have a fear that I might break it when I try to twist too hard. And all the joints seem to work really well but the pegs on the ball joints seem to be a little bit of a problem. Adding some silicone shock oil or lowering the exposure might help the ball and peg joints a little bit but I have not tested this theory yet so if I ever decide to do this test, I will make a follow up video. For some final thoughts, I think that this resin is great for printing flexible parts on an action figure. 
The resin will work really well with parts like the biceps, forearms, thighs, calves, knees and elbows. Parts like the head may also be a great contender for this resin since it has some inherent softness. However, if you are wanting to use it for joints that need twisting motions, it might not be the best resin to use. If you are wanting to avoid strong chemicals like IPA in your household, this resin being water washable is another huge plus. And another plus is the curing time on this resin coming in at only 90 seconds. For some of my other resins, I have waited for parts to cure in the curing chamber for about 30 minutes. So the 90 seconds spent here almost seemed too short. Coming in at $32.99 USD at the time of recording with a 46% discount applied, it might be a good time to buy this resin that normally goes for $60.99 USD retail for a liter of resin. I've had a lot of questions from all of you guys on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok on what alternate resins are available since some of the brands may not be easily accessible in your location. This resin, I think, is a great alternative to print out mechanical parts such as action figures. I would only recommend caution with joints that require twisting, but overall, the print quality, ease of printing, and success rates are really the highlight of this resin. Granted, I have not tested this resin's stability and performance over a long duration. As it is currently, this resin has some great qualities for mechanical prints while having some drawbacks that should not be ignored. So with all of that being said, this resin will get you to a point where the action figure can be fully assembled, but the articulation will be a big problem for most users. This resin is too sticky and soft, which although is very helpful for the knees and elbows to be articulating a little bit tighter, it causes a lot of problems with hips and other ball joints. So if you are not able to find alternate resins in your location or you are printing a less complex action figure, this resin can still be considered for action figure prints. However, if you want to play with your figures and pose them heavily, this is not the resin for you. So there you have it, another resin review. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was educational along with being entertaining. I will be back again soon with another action figure build. Until then, if you want to see any of my updates, please have a look at my Instagram. I run polls every month on Patreon to determine what figures I make next. So make sure you tune in and vote. For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or concerns, please voice it in the comment section below. Thank you everyone for tuning in and for all of your support. I'll see you in the next video.